In an era marked by empires and epic battles, one figure stood as a colossus, casting a long shadow over ancient history. His name is synonymous with military genius, daring strategies, and a relentless will to challenge the greatest power of the ancient world. He was not just a man, but a symbol of defiance, ingenuity, and raw courage. A Carthaginian whose legacy was carved into the annals of history with the determination of a conqueror and the cunning of a master tactician. His journey, marked by impossible feats and legendary battles, resonates through time as a testament to the enduring spirit of human ambition. This is the tale of Hannibal Hamilcar, the greatest enemy Rome ever faced. A man who led an army across the formidable Alps struck fear into the hearts of his foes and achieved what seemed impossible. His path was one of audacity and brilliance fraught with peril, yet illuminated by sheer resolve. Join us as we unravel the life story of Hannibal. From his early years in the tumultuous world of Carthaginian politics to his extraordinary military campaigns, we delve into the journey of a man who dared to defy Rome and in doing so became immortalized as one of history's most remarkable figures. In the year 247 BC, as the Western Mediterranean simmered with conflict, a child was born into a world at war. In the heart of Carthage, a city famed for its wealth and maritime prowess, Hannibal Hamilcar entered the stage of history. Born towards the end of the brutal First Punic War, Hannibal was the son of Hamilcar Barca, a revered Carthaginian commander. This era was a crucible of animosity between two emerging superpowers, Carthage and Rome, whose rivalry would shape the destiny of the Mediterranean for centuries. Hannibal's early years were marked by the echoes of battle and the burden of legacy. As the son of the Barsid dynasty, he was born into one of Carthage's most influential families, aristocrats who wielded considerable power both in the military and political arenas. His father, a hero of Carthage, had fought valiantly against Rome, instilling in young Hannibal not just a sense of pride, but also a deep-rooted animus towards the Roman Republic. As he grew, Hannibal's life was a tapestry of rigorous education and military discipline. In Carthage, he would have been schooled in various languages, with a special emphasis on Greek, the lingua franca of the time. His education wasn't confined to the classroom. The young prince of Carthage was also a student of war. Under his father's tutelage, Hannibal learned the art of command and the strategies that would later define his military exploits. It was in these formative years that the seeds of Hannibal's destiny were sown. The tales of his father's campaigns against Rome, the stories of Carthage's glory and suffering, all fueled a growing ambition in Hannibal's heart an ambition that would one day lead him to challenge the might of Rome itself. This early period of Hannibal's life was a crucible from which emerged a leader of unparalleled skill and resolve. His upbringing was not just about inheritance and privilege. It was a preparation for a life dedicated to Carthage's cause, a life destined to be etched in the annals of history. The shadows of the First Punic War still lingered as Hannibal embarked on his military career. In the rugged landscapes of Spain, a region rich in resources and fiercely contested, Hannibal found his proving ground. Under his brother-in-law Hasdrubal, who succeeded his father Hamilcar in command, Hannibal honed his skills as a soldier and a leader. In these early campaigns, Hannibal's natural aptitude for warfare became evident. He was more than just a soldier. He was a thinker, a strategist who understood the nuances of battle. His tasks were not limited to combat. He was involved in diplomacy, governance, and the integration of new territories into the Carthaginian fold. These experiences in Spain were instrumental in shaping Hannibal's perspective on leadership but fate had grander designs for Hannibal. In 221 BC, 
Following the assassination of Hasdrubal, the Carthaginian army in Spain found itself in need of a leader. The soldiers, who had come to respect and admire the young commander, chose Hannibal to lead them. At just 26 years old, Hannibal became the supreme commander of the Carthaginian forces in Spain. This army was not just a fighting force. It was a melting pot of cultures and backgrounds with Iberian, African and mercenary elements. Hannibal's leadership unified these diverse troops into a formidable military machine. His ability to inspire loyalty and discipline among his men was unmatched, a trait that would serve him well in the daunting challenges ahead. Hannibal's elevation to command marked the beginning of a bold and aggressive expansion in Spain. He understood that controlling Spain was crucial, not just for its resources, but also as a strategic position against Rome. One of his significant early actions was the siege and capture of Saguntum, a city allied with Rome. This bold move was a direct challenge to Roman authority and set the stage for the inevitable conflict between Carthage and Rome. The fall of Saguntum in 219 BC was more than a military victory. It was a statement of intent. Hannibal was not content to defend Carthage's interests. He sought to expand them to challenge Rome's growing influence. This act set into motion a series of events that would lead to one of the most famous military campaigns in history. The stage was set, the players were in place and the Mediterranean world braced itself for a conflict of epic proportions. Hannibal, now the master of a powerful army, turned his gaze towards Rome, setting his sights on a bold and daring campaign that would forever change the course of history. The decision to invade Italy was a stroke of strategic audacity, a move that would forever etch Hannibal's name in the annals of military history. His plan was revolutionary, to take the war directly to Rome's doorstep. Hannibal knew that a direct assault on Roman soil would unsettle the formidable Republic a tactic never before dared on such a scale. This bold strategy was rooted in a deep understanding of his adversary, Rome's preference for fighting abroad and its reliance on alliances. To weaken Rome by severing its ties with allies and to fight them where they felt safest, within the borders of Italy. His plan was not merely to defeat Roman armies, but to erode the very foundations of Roman power. The journey began with a monumental task, crossing the Pyrenees. This was the first test of Hannibal's logistical prowess and the loyalty of his diverse army. The passage through these mountainous terrains was fraught with challenges, both from the rugged landscape and the local tribes. Hannibal's strategic acumen was on full display as he navigated these obstacles, maintaining the cohesion and morale of his forces. Upon reaching the Rhone, Hannibal faced another daunting challenge. The mighty river stood as a natural barrier, its broad and swift waters a test of Hannibal's resolve. But with ingenuity and determination, Hannibal orchestrated a remarkable river crossing, a feat of engineering and coordination that showcased his exceptional leadership and tactical brilliance. The greatest challenge, however, lay ahead, the Alps. This mountain range was a formidable natural fortress seemingly impassable with a large army, let alone elephants. Yet Hannibal dared to tread where no army of such size had gone before. The crossing of the Alps was a venture into the unknown, a gamble of epic proportions. The journey through the Alps was a trial by nature. Hannibal and his army faced harsh weather, treacherous terrain and hostile tribes. Every step was a struggle against the elements, a battle for survival. Yet, under Hannibal's indomitable leadership, the army persevered. They traversed steep cliffs, navigated narrow passes, and endured the biting. The image of elephants laboriously making their way through snowy mountain paths became an enduring symbol of this incredible journey. This crossing was not just a physical ordeal, but a psychological one. Hannibal's leadership, his ability to inspire and motivate his men in the face of overwhelming odds, 
was the linchpin of this daring endeavor. The passage through the Alps, though costly, was a testament to the resolve and tenacity of Hannibal and his army. Emerging from the Alpine passes, Hannibal's army descended into the Italian peninsula. The sight of the fertile plains of northern Italy before them must have seemed like a vision of hope after the arduous journey. But this was just the beginning. Ahead lay the confrontation with Rome. As Hannibal's army emerged from the shadow of the Alps, they beheld the rich landscape. They had arrived at Rome's doorstep, but this was no triumphant parade. The army was weary, diminished, yet unbroken in spirit. Hannibal, undeterred by the ordeal, was ready to engage in what he had set out to do. The Carthaginian commander wasted no time. He quickly adapted to the new terrain, rallying his troops and preparing them for the battles ahead. His strategy was clear to weaken Rome by turning its own allies against it. Hannibal sought not just victory in battle, but a complete strategic upheaval that would shift the balance of power in the Mediterranean. Hannibal's campaigns in Italy were marked by a series of stunning victories, from the Battle of Trebia to the legendary triumph at Cannae. These battles showcased Hannibal's brilliance as a tactician and his ability to outthink and outmaneuver larger Roman armies. His victories were not just military successes. They shook the very foundation of Roman power, challenging the invincibility of the Roman legions and sowing doubt among Rome's allies. Yet Hannibal's impact extended far beyond the battlefield. His presence in Italy for over a decade was a constant threat to Rome, forcing it to rethink its military strategies and policies. Hannibal's legacy is a testament to the power of strategic vision and the impact a single determined individual can have on the course of history. Ultimately, Hannibal's campaign in Italy, though remarkable, did not lead to the ultimate downfall of Rome. After years of war, he was recalled to defend Carthage and eventually defeated at the Battle of Zama. His later years were spent in voluntary exile, away from the city he had fought so valiantly for. Yet the legend of Hannibal did not fade with his departure from the battlefield. In death as in life, Hannibal remained an emblem of resistance and military genius. His journey across the Alps with elephants, his victories on Roman soil, and his enduring impact on military tactics and strategy have captivated historians, strategists, and the imagination of generations. Hannibal Hamilcar, the son of Carthage, remains one of history's most extraordinary military figures. A man who dared to challenge Rome and in doing so, secured his place in the eternal annals of history. As the echoes of Hannibal's legendary journey fade into the annals of history, we are left with more than just tales of battles and conquests. We carry forward the legacy of a man whose strategic genius, indomitable spirit and unyielding determination challenged an empire and shaped the cross. Hannibal's story is a vivid reminder of the power of vision, courage, and resilience against overwhelming odds. His journey across the Alps, his victories on the battlefields of Italy, and his enduring influence on military tactics are not just chapters in a history book. They are testaments to the human spirit's capacity for greatness, to the potential for one individual to alter the course of events, and to the timeless nature of true leadership and strategic thinking. For those who seek to delve deeper into the annals of history to explore the stories of leaders, warriors, innovators and civilizations that have shaped our world, we invite you to join us at Timeless Chronicles. Here we bring history to life, unraveling the tales of the past with the vivid detail and narrative flair they deserve. Thanks for watching and God bless you.